You read the book. You heard the radio show. You saw the television series. You ate the takeaway meal. And now... Cramon, the movie! Computer readout. Subject, Captain Elvis Brandenburg Cremon. Born December 25th, 1950. Height, 6 foot 10. Physical attributes, supreme athlete, concert pianist, concord pilot, mountain climber, diplomat, space captain and genius. IQ 498. Captain Cremon! You're the only man alive that can handle this mission, Cremon. I know, sir. It's up to you to save my empire, Captain. Yes, Your Majesty. Do you realize, Cremon, that the fate of the continental United States is in your hands? Fear not, Mr. President. It's not for nothing that they call me the world's most fabulous man. Hi, kids. Cremon here. Before we get started on this fab episode, I'd like to fill you in on what's been happening to me since I saw you last. I got myself an amazing new stereo system, and oh yes, United Galaxy Headquarters, or as we call it, UGG, presented me with the most fabulous man in the world apart from God award. What a night that was. Just about everyone in the universe was there, except for Marlon Brando. He won't be making a guest appearance in this movie. He's completely outpriced himself. Anyway, as you probably know, the coveted UGG Award is presented once an eon. Hard to believe it's been a whole eon since they gave me my last award. The master of ceremonies was Marty, I once played a club on the moon, but there was no atmosphere, Schwartz. What a great guy. But first, the captain's longtime confidant and colleague, brilliant scientist and all-round short guy, Wolfgang Amadeus Getfinger, right here! Marty went on to introduce my delectable assistant, Carla, the only girl in the universe who, when she falls down, bounces back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of stars, the hero of heroes, the world's most fabulous man, Captain Elvis Brandenburg Carrera! It was with a tear in my eye and a lump in my throat that I accepted the adoration of the crowd. I went on to make the most moving acceptance speech ever heard. They presented me with a new ship, the biggest and most technologically advanced ship ever to be built in this or any other movie. Gee, Captain, it's... It's terrific. But where is everything? There's nothing here. Where are the computers? Oh, Carla, you, you silly space nymph. The ship is the computer. It surpasses anything yet devised by man. The whole ship is one enormous computerized brain, capable of anything and more. Thank you, Captain. You're welcome, ship. But I still don't get it, Captain. Surely the ship doesn't do everything by itself. I mean, the unions wouldn't allow it. You're right, Carler. Show the control module, ship. Yes, Captain. See, Carla? How does that grab you? Gee, that was neat, Captain. Yes, Captain, very impressive. Okay, ship, something a bit more relaxing. Something like this, Captain. Mmm, well done, ship. My pleasure, your wish is my command. I know that, ship. Anything you ask, I shall provide for you. Yeah, I got the message, ship. Anything, Captain. Shut up, ship. <laughs> Captain, mm -hmm. we're, we're alone on our new ship, uh -huh. and you, uh, you don't seem to have a mission at the moment, yeah. and, uh... The Scrabble isn't unpacked or anything. Uh -huh. and, you know, I, I thought maybe we could, um... Yeah, yeah, I know, Carla, but what about afterwards? I thought perhaps a movie. Ah. Oh, by the way, you want to freshen up first? Sure, why not? Okay, ship, got that? Yes, Captain. Showers followed by cosmic bliss, and then a movie. Okay, get on with it, ship. Coming right up. <laughs> enjoyed the mega experience of a lifetime again and again. And in that order, little did we know that back on Earth, trouble was brewing. In a 
secret room below the sub-basement of the UN in New York City. A meeting was taking place. In attendance were all the major power possessors of the world and David Frost. It seemed that parts of the universe had disappeared without trace. I know it's boring, but it's the only plot we've got. I'll tell you guys what we need. What we need is Cramon. Captain Cramon, that cute little devil. Yeah, that is very right. Yes, quite, quite, yes. Now, Ford, he's the one. Yeah, baby, that's the one. You sent out the word, you hear? Trawler fishing in the North Sea. Brave men on small boats who risk their lives every day. Did space move for you, Captain? Yeah, yeah, sure. It sure did for me. Oh, it's terrific. Who are these men who fight the elements and trap the fish? Who are the fish? How are they caught? Here we see the men. Boy, this is boring. Well, of course it's boring, Carla. Supporting features are supposed to be boring to make the big picture look good. Gee, Captain, you know everything. <laughs> We have a distress call from the planet Earth. Top priority galactic disaster imminent. You are to report to the air-conditioned offices in the secret tunnel underneath the top of the incredibly remote Mount Fujiyama, where you will meet Q, head of universal security, and reputed to be the most powerful man in the world and personal friend of Mick Jagger. Any friend of Mick's is a friend of mine. Get ready, ship. Functionalize star systems. Release stabilizers. Activate solar boosters. Prepare sandwiches. Easy on the mustard. Set course for Fujiyama! through the secret passage and along an amazing complex of corridors and tunnels, each cut out of solid rock. The visual effect was stunning, but on the other hand, it was just an old movie trick to kill time when you've got a thin plot. Then suddenly in the distance we saw a large Q. Could this be it? Kremen reporting is requested. Oh, you're the famous Captain Kremen. And you're Q. Mm, thank you. You're Q, too. <laughs> my little jokey poos. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> and this is my beautiful assistant, Carla. <coughs> Love your food. Make it yourself, did you? Have you got a little man tucked away? <laughs> the K is an absolute dream. Tell me, how do you manage to move in those tight trousers? But they're so now, aren't they? They have that certain something. I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> aren't we just slaves to fashion? We had a distress call from Earth, sir. They said you'd fill me in. Did they now? <laughs> well, you know, I can't believe we've never met before. Do you go to the bars on Jupiter? Or you a stay at home, play at home? I'd like to get right down to business, Chief. Oh, call me Q. In fact, <laughs> call me anytime. <laughs> oh, I'm so naughty. Okay, Q, I'd just like to get the brief on the mega disaster. Oh, temper, temper. Suddenly we're hell and headstrong. Don't be so impatient. Relax, ease into it. Loosen your girdle, Edna. There's lots of time. But no buts. What have I said? Listen, don't push it, Alice. This is my only scene in this whole lousy movie. It's okay for you, Mr. Butch leading man. You go on to save the universe. Fade out curtain, standing evasion. But this is it for me. It's all I got, sweetie. God knows I've tried. I mean, look at all this. 
is this a set and a half or is this a set and a half? What I'm saying, Tallulah, is hands off my scene. I got another 20 outfits to get through yet. Relax! There's people out there who are just getting into me. Am I right or am I right? And uh, now, Church, I'm afraid I really must explain the little contratemps the universe has gotten itself into. I don't really know much about it. Somebody's eating up planets or something. I don't know. I'm not one to pry. Look at this. And this. Hey, there seem to be teeth marks on the Milky Way. I know. Isn't it revolting? Yucky poo. Q went on to explain that there'd been other strange disappearances, but not a clue as to who was behind it all. We said our goodbyes to Q and left him to disappear up his own ascending stairway. And so we set out in search of the monster of monsters. I decided to cruise around the universe to see what I could pick up. Then I got a brainwave. I've always been known for my wavy brains. The answer may lie in the ghetto. In a flash, we were mingling with the scum of the universe, the forgotten monsters of forgotten movies, dropouts, drug heads, acid heads, three heads. Then I saw our undercover contact, Sam the Stooley, sitting in the corner. Hi, Sam. What's the word on the street? You want a case, Captain? Yes, Sam. Strange disappearances in the universe? You got it, Sam. Teeth marks in the Milky Way? No one knows anything about it? That's it, Sam. What's the word? Nothing, Captain. Thanks, Sam. Any time, Captain. After all, that's what I'm here for. By the way, Captain. Yes, Sam? How about letting Carla sit on me for a while? No dice, Sam. We pushed our way past two barflies and made for the door. Captain, there's a man in my trick. <laughs> Awaiting your instructions, Captain. We are really in a fix, Captain. What do we do? Captain, what's wrong? Why aren't you saying anything? As unbelievable as it may seem, we were stuck in the middle of the plot without the rest of the script. Yes, Incredible Ideas Incorporated, motto, we never let you down, had let us down. There was nothing we could do. Hello? Hello, Captain. Uh -huh. Incredible Ideas Incorporated here, motto, we never let you down. Sorry we let you down, but don't worry, we found a way out, and it's great. What we do is... Yeah? We stall for time. Oh. And here's how we do it. Cue title captions. Voice in echo. The story of mankind. Tonight's episode, day one. Sorry, Captain. It's not working. We get back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have a small problem, but don't panic. I, Kremen, will triumph once again. It's not for nothing that I'm known as the world's most fabulous man. I'll come up with the answers, but be prepared for a commercial break. Captain, look! Jumping jackpoots! Oh, no! <coughs> Quick, follow that belch! Cue commercials! Commercial time! You are looking at a modern woman. A woman of today. Cool, intelligent, sophisticated and attractive. What kind of watch does she wear? Yes, she wears new Pupil Prompt, the digital contact lens, completely undetectable and reliable. See the time all the time with Pupil Prompt, available from fashionable stores everywhere. Pupil Prompt. Well, record fans, that's the end of part one. Has the monster really taken a bite out of planet Earth? Will he get indigestion? Will Kremen return to Fujiyama for fresh instructions? And if he does, will Q get fresh? Will Carla sit on Sam the Stooley? Could she really care for a chair? Do you really care what happens? If you do, turn to side two, but first...
And now, it's watch to attention time. By the liquid thrills of Nargo the Mangled Quack, it's part two. Starring Candy Bar, Dandruff, and Willie Take a Check. Here's Kremen! Thank you, thank you, friends. Thank you. Hi, kids. Remember part one when we whipped your brains to cream with jokes like this? Captain? Yeah? What is it about me that makes all the guys at Starcar want to take me out all the time? I don't know, Carla. What do you think? I don't know either. I just give up. I think that's it, Carla. Captain, Captain, quick, look at this. What is it, Doctor? Calm down. I have just invented a revolutionary new kind of cigarette lighter. What you do is you push this button here, uh -huh. and this arrow pops up and points to somebody who's got a match. It was at that very moment that a strange thing happened. Captain, these scripts have just arrived for you. Oh, thank you. Who are you? My name is Betty. I'm the new character. I got this sort of hunchback, droopy jawline, dangling cigarette. Grotesque yet cuddly, know what I mean? Sure, Benny. Uh, welcome aboard. Always room for another pretty face. And it was at that very moment, another strange thing happened. <laughs> the monster had struck again, this time too close for comfort. We hoisted anchor and set off, following his strange groans through unknown galaxies where no hand had ever set foot. Captain, we have the fastest ship in the universe, but... But will it be fast enough? We'll soon see, Doc. Hey, Captain, look! Where is it leading us to? I don't know, Carla. What do you make of it, ship? I am analyzing as fast as I can. Don't bug me. Ladies and gentlemen, the following scenes of this strange unknown galaxy have been filmed at great expense with a new improved three-dimensional optical illusion technique. To appreciate the full impact of this three-dimensional visual sensation, it is imperative that you wear the special glasses provided. They can be found under your seats. Thank you. I just don't believe what I'm seeing. What do you make of it, Doc? It's as though everyone's life since the beginning of time is flashing before our eyes. Look, Captain, there's World War II with the original cast. Yeah, and there's Ben Hur. Look at him go. And look, Joan of Arc for the hot little number she was. Captain, what is that crowd of people? And look what they're doing. Don't worry, Carla. It's just a Bette Midler concert. They do those kind of things. Suddenly, it was over. We had passed through the time warp beyond everything known to man and into this empty void. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our amazing three-dimensional sequence. Would you please replace the specially provided glasses under your seats for the next performance? Thank you. Captain, I have now switched over to my super logic mode. Well done, ship. Where are we? I don't know. Some great computer. Even I knew the answer to that one. That's a cheap remark, but it goes with the dress. Captain, it is not logically possible to establish our correct position in this void without some point of reference, which at the moment is non-existent. Look, Captain! There is a planet appearing on the scanner! I see it, Doc. Let's move in. Okay, ship, there's your point of reference. Get to work! In milliseconds, we had landed. There were no signs of life. It seemed deserted. I have now established our position. We are in the uncharted galaxy of Snoop and have landed on the planet Bogey. Bogey? What a funny name for a planet. What does it mean? Uh, Captain, I think I could answer that. Take a look on the scanner. Of all the bars and all the gin joints and all the galaxies, you had a fallen in line. Uh, excuse me, we're on the trail of a monster who's been eating our universe? Okay, Blue Eyes, get this and get it fast. You see this galaxy? It's empty. You know why it's empty? I'll tell you why. Your friend the monster. The kid's a big eater. He only left us alone because I got friends on the inside. His inside. This galaxy used to be filled with lovely planets and friendly boys. Now it's over, thanks to him. So take my advice and get out of here before it's too late. It's too late. Without even waiting for an autograph, I put the ship into mega speed and made a run for it. But it was no good. We are in a no escape situation. We are surrounded. Total size of monster impossible to estimate. He's really big. Captain, we seem to be heading into a black hole. What does it mean? I don't know, Carla. 
I fell asleep during the Disney movie. Captain, we are in total reverse thrust, but we are still moving forward at ten times the speed of sound. There's nothing we can do. Oh, Captain! been swallowed by the monster? Well, it sure looks that way, Carla. We thought we were on the monster's trail, but we were on his menu. We have a really serious problem here, Captain. That's right, Doc, but don't worry. I'll get us out of here as soon as I have digested the facts. I'm not worried about escaping, Captain. It's it's these ridiculous menu and digestion jokes I can't swallow. Now you're doing it. Oh, Captain, look! Amazing fall through the monster's internal organs finally came to an end as we crashed down into the scrap heap of his last meal. Okay, ship, give me a damage report and fast. All systems operational, Captain. Position? We are lodged at the base of the stomach. Can we move? I'm afraid not, Captain. We're jammed between the sixth fleet and what appears to have been Bombay. It's only a matter of time until we are crushed to death. We were hopelessly trapped. Was this to be the end of the world's most fabulous man? <laughs> Suddenly, my supercharged brain knew exactly what had to be done. Assemble oxygen units and load them into the exhaust hatch. Yes, Captain. Connect high-velocity pressure pumps to oxygen supply points and commence pumping oxygen into the stomach. Yes, Captain. Visualize overall oxygen supply meter readout on scanner. Yes, Captain. What are we doing, Captain? We're playing with nature, Carla. It's our only chance of escape. Keep watching that needle on the scanner. If it goes into the red, there won't be enough oxygen left for us to survive. The stomach is inflating, Captain. Good. We should be getting some reaction now. That's it. It's working. Captain, the needle is dropping. Extremely inflated. Oxygen supplies critical. Instructions. Keep pumping! It's got to work! My ingenious plan had worked. The monster's body had relieved itself of the unwanted air, and we were free. Free to search for new adventures and better writers. Well, kids, that's the end of the story. And if you had half as much fun listening to it as we had recording it, you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, shush. Hi, everybody. I'm Q. As if you didn't know. I mean, I stole the whole picture, didn't I? Wasn't I just great? I got five offers already, and one of them's for work. <laughs> Oh, naughty, naughty. Anyway, fiends, I just know you're dying to hear some of the music again. So we're gonna let you do just that, aren't we too nice? We're gonna play you Pretty Pauline from the Alien Bar scene by Backstreet Band. I know you'll just love it so much. And then it's my theme, which of course is beautiful. And besides, it'll help to pad out the album. Love you. See you later, honeys. Bye.
You have been listening to Captain Kremen, the soundtrack album that doesn't need a movie.